Hello, this is Thomas, K4SWL here. And uh, today I'm out uh, near Pisgah National Forest. Uh, I've set up um, uh, the ICOM IC705 here today uh, with one goal in mind, and that is to check out the new MAT tuner or MAT tuner MAT705 Plus. Now, um, even though it doesn't say so on the front here, oddly. This is actually the MAT-705 Plus, um, if you're looking at this on the uh, Matt Tuner website or one of the distributors' websites. Um, Matt Tuner uh, reached out to me and uh, sent this to me. I just received it yesterday um, after seeing, I think, my uh, review of the original MAT-705 ATU, uh, which I, uh, I think I took delivery of it um, shortly after the ICOM IC705 was released and took it to the field and was very, very pleased with how well it matched antennas and uh, did a video that you may have seen here on YouTube or on uh, QRPer.com, my blog. Um, but then um, my, uh, I should say that was a really quick uh, love affair because um, the following week I used the antenna tuner at home and it worked fine. A couple days later, I took it out to the field and I realized I had left the tuner, antenna tuner on. Uh, the original MAT-75 has a little mechanical switch, an on and off switch. I'd accidentally left it on, made it to a park to do an activation and realized that the battery was completely depleted after two days um, in my pack with no, you know, not connected up to a radio or anything, of course, just like this. And uh, so I, did uh, you know? Did the procedure to replace the battery, and um, you have to remove these four points right here, uh, pull the front panel off, the boards in there, and then quickly discovered that really the things I didn't like about the original one was the internal design, uh, the nine volt battery. That obviously, if you forget to turn off the uh, um, power switch, you're going to be replacing a lot. Uh, in that original one, the nine volt battery was just held to the board with some adhesive material, and um, also, I wasn't too crazy with how the uh, BNC connections were connected to the board. While it was secure in this form, when you were pulling it out all the time, it, it wasn't great. Also, these little LED um, uh, lenses uh, would pop out, and you could lose them very easily if you weren't careful. So anyway, I wasn't pleased with the inside of it, because for $220 or so, um, that's a lot of money to spend for an antenna tuner that has kind of internal issues, when there are so many others uh, that are less pricey. Now, the 705, of course, mates directly with the ICOM IC705. It's designed to do that. Um, it will work with other uh, radios, of course. It's RF sensing, so if you um, have a really bad mismatch, it'll try to sense and uh, tune it. I have not tested that. I've only uh, tested the original one with the 705, and I actually haven't tested this one yet. The only thing I've done with this one is uh, I charged it last night, uh, knowing I'd take it out today. So it's been charged up and should be good to go. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and turn this thing on and see if it tunes uh, antennas. And I will be discovering this with you. This is a real-time, real-life video, no editing whatsoever. So things go wrong. You may be hanging with me a bit while I sort it out, but hopefully it'll you know be pretty self-explanatory. Now what I've done here in advance is I put my antenna up, uh, the um, uh, chameleon antennas hanging up here. Like I said, it covers from 160 to 6 meters, so it's a you know wonderful antenna for something like this. Uh, it gives the antenna tuner you know the ability to uh, really go its whole range because that is the range of this antenna tuner. Um, I should oh yeah I should tell you I'm very very pleased with how they've done. I think that this is actually the design they should have come out to with to begin with. First of all, this one does not use nine volt batteries inside. It uses uh, some lithium cells. I think it has two cells. I haven't opened it up to see, but it has internal lithium batteries. It has power management of its own, so it doesn't need an on and off switch like the previous version. And my favorite part of this is it uses a USB-C port for charging. Even the 705 uses a micro USB port, which I feel is a really outdated type uh, connection for doing that. I love USB-C's because they're just way more forgiving. They're not, um, you know, you can plug it in any way and it works. Um, they're, they've kind of become the standard. I have more of those cords now than I do micro S, uh, USB. Um, but you plug it in, charge it, and you're good to go. Uh, so on the back we have the uh, connection for the 
IC705, antenna connection, and then the transmitter connection. So let's go ahead and connect this and get it going. The only thing I did was just kind of connect up the antenna and I connected the um, uh, radio to this cable. That's the only thing I've really done here. So I'm gonna connect that up. Let me see if I can find my antenna line. Here we go, that's on. And now I'm going to plug this into the side. The tuner port is right here on the side of the 705. Just plug that straight in. And now it's paired directly to the 705, hopefully. Let's see how this works. Okay, let's turn on the 705. You may not be able to see the screen very well. There's some reflection here today. Also, my hands are freezing cold. It's below freezing here right now. And uh, it has actually, the snow flurries have stopped here for a bit. We've actually had some little light snow flurries while I've been doing my setup here. Okay, so right now I'm on 3538. That must have been where I had it last. And um, uh, actually, you know what we'll do? Let's start in the middle of the band. Let's start up at uh, 20 meters and see how this goes. Um, what you have to do at first, you can see down here, yes, uh, there's a green light. Uh, the instruction said that um, you'd know it's connected up properly when you have a green light here. That light is red when it's charging. Um, we go into the function menu, and I did look at this earlier, um, and uh, it says tuner off. I think uh, when the tuner's not connected, you know, this is kind of, it's, it's not highlighted at all. You're supposed to touch it quickly once. Now when that happened, even though it looks like it didn't do a thing um, with that, the uh, I did hear this click inside, so I think that did engage it, and I heard the um, gain kind of boost on this, so it must have been implementing the antenna tuner. Let me go back and look at, uh, okay, I'm on 14043, okay, so that's a fine frequency. I see somebody here above me, you probably can't see that, but there's no one on frequency right now. So I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and try to get it to tune. Now, according to the directions, you press and hold the tuner button the first time you do this. And it finds a match. Let's see how well that match went. Let's go and get this to where you can see it. Maybe I'll change this. Uh, let's change this to these meters here. Maybe you can see that a little bit better. Okay, let's see what kind of SWR match we got. Yeah, a one-to-one, -one basically match. Okay. Let's move up. Uh, let's move up to the, um, let's just go up from here. Let's see, let's go up to the 17 meter band. And uh, move up to somewhere around the QRP calling frequency. Just so you know, if you're ever doing an experiment like this or you're activating a park or doing anything, always listen before you transmit. I have to tell you that with uh, ICOM radios and, and ATUs that pair with them, um, if they don't have an internal antenna tuner, the one thing that I keep forgetting when I use one of these radios is anytime you tap your key, if you've moved frequency and it needs to readjust, it'll just start tuning up. And I'd like to believe that when I'm in the park and someone tunes up on top of me, that's what they accidentally did. They just forgot and it tuned up. Because it, now I'm going to tap this and hopefully it'll tune. Yes. Okay, let's see what kind of, uh, that was a very quick match. Let's see what kind of, yeah, I'd say about a 1.2 to 1. Uh, so that's really good. Let's uh, keep moving up the band here. So we'll see how well it will match everything on this one. Let's go down to the CW portions here. Sorry, my hands are cold. This is... I knew I couldn't operate this radio with gloves on easily, so... Okay. I don't hear anyone there. Let's go ahead and move it to CW mode since I've got this going. I believe though if I had my mic here it would tune up as well as soon as I hit the PTT. Yep, 
Yep. A one to one match. Excellent. Okay. So let's keep moving up the band. Let me move down to. I, I like to go around my uh, QRP calling frequencies. Although right now I believe I'm actually operating at 10 watts, yeah, because I've got an external battery hooked up right now. I realized when I came out here and just turned it on to make sure I uh, had even t um, uh, charged this battery at all, I forgot that the last time I used this I had not charged it yet, so it was on one battery segment. Um, so I plugged it in. So when you have an external battery on the uh, 705, you can get 10 watts out. Of course, you can lower that uh, very easily. In fact, I may just lower it just to do it here. Let's go down to 50%, and that should be 5 watts. Okay. And uh, I hear nobody on there, so let's go ahead and tune it. Okay, let's see what we got. One to one. Yep, very solid. That was a very quick uh, match, too. Now, you'll notice here, I just noticed this, that the it says online and tuning. That happened after I did that initial tune from the function menu. That light came on. So the power light came on as soon as I plugged it into the 705 and turned it on. Then this light came on after I did my initial tune. So now it's kind of fully engaged with the radio. Um, let's keep moving up here. Uh, 10 meter band. And um, you know what? I'm just going to tune in up here. I'm not going to go down to the CW portions. <laughs> this band's pretty dead right now anyway. I hear nobody there. So here we go. About a 1.5 to 1. Yep, yeah, 1 1.4, 1 1.5 to 1. Not bad. Sorry, I wish you could see this screen a little easier. Maybe if I move it down like that, you can. I don't know. Anyway, let's move up. What I love about the 705 is it actually covers, well, it covers more than HF, but it covers from 160 to 6 meters, and then VHF and UHF as well. Uh, let's try this. Let's go to 60 meters, or 6 meters. Um, of course, there's not really any activity here. Let's try this. About a 1.2 to 1. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, now let's move way down the band to the top band. I can tell you now there won't be anybody on here. Um, let me move to, um, I'll move even further down. Let me move down to about 1810 or so. That's where I usually like to go for CW. Okay, this will be a nice test for this tuner. This antenna does cover 160, but... Yep, about a 1.2, 1.3 to 1. Excellent. That's very, very good. That's a, that was quick, too. That was a very quick tune. Okay, let's move up to 80 meter band. Let me listen here for just a bit. I'm not hearing anything, so I don't have the really the chance here to easily send QRL or something to ask if someone's on frequency before I tune up. That's the reason I wait a little extra time, so. One to one, very solid. Okay, our final band, I believe, uh, is, uh, oh no, actually, I had skipped, uh, I've got uh, the 30 meter band too. Let's see if we hear anybody on 40. About a 1.2 to 1, excellent. Excellent. And, okay, so like I told you, this is the very, very first time I've used this. More than likely, because this has a lot of memories in it, um, it knows what frequency it's on. 
next time I tune this up on the same frequency, I'll probably find that the, the tuning's really quick. Um, and that'll really help because usually when I do park activations or if I'm planning to do a soda activation, I tend to stick to the same frequency. So being able to move back and forth, that'll be really nice. Okay, let's move up to the 30 meter band. Okay, I'm not hearing anybody there, so let's go ahead. Yeah, one-to-one, -one, solid. Excellent. So that covers basically all of the HF bands. Um, so, so far so good. Um, I like this, uh, I like the form factor. I think, gosh, I don't have the other one here to test. I think this one may be slightly shorter than uh, the original MAT705. Now, um, to me, the, the proof will be in the pudding. Like if we can use this in the field a whole bunch without having to charge it up every time if it tunes reliably uh, if it continues to tune really quickly and tune a wide variety of antennas which i'll try it with a wide variety we'll see how this does um, i'll actually probably do some videos uh, using it to try to tune uh, resonant antennas off band uh, which I, I do a lot of and we'll see how well that does um, but so far, so good. Uh, this is not uh, not too bad. And uh, I can say that just in terms of design, I'm, I'm hopeful that this will be a lot better than the last one. Um, I was not uh, pleased with the um, internal design of the original MAT705. So uh, uh, I think this really addresses my main concerns, which is I didn't think we really needed a mechanical on and off switch on a tuner that could you know just go to sleep when it's not plugged into the radio and uh, replacing that 9 volt battery was not fun I mean to do that in a field on the original MAT 705 you're probably gonna lose some parts uh, because the lenses come out all, you know it's just it's not fun um, you know pulling all that out uh, plus you have um, the little um, uh, hex bolts or whatever you have to pull out too and um, so far so good on this though. Look for uh, future videos and I'm, I'll plan to take the, I've been taking the 705 out in the field a whole lot anyway. Uh, I'll try to keep doing some more activations with it, test it with a wide variety of antennas. I've got some verticals, some resonant antennas. I'm planning to build a delta loop and a dipole and some other things. So we'll see how well this antenna tuner holds up over time. Uh, so check back. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Um, sorry, there are no edits in my videos. They're real time. You're sitting here with me doing this as I do it. Um, I'm glad this went as well as it did, uh, to be honest, um, because I wouldn't go back and uh, re-edit the video. So um, you've seen what it's like to uh, plug this up the first time. Again, the only thing I would encourage you to do I don't know what the charge is like in this when you first receive it because uh, it has lithium cells and I think in general uh, companies don't send lithium cells uh, via the postal service or uh, parcel services fully charged anymore. So uh, first thing I do is just plug this in and charge it. I believe that the manual, I do have the manual here, it's a very, very simple, very small little brochure. I believe the manual says it can charge in about one hour. Um, and. Uh, yeah, very pleased uh, so far. So uh, we'll see how this goes. Thanks again for watching and um, let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to answer them.